to Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. Old Man Metal's Musings is a proud part of the Rat Style Review Network. And now, without further ado... Hey, this is Old Man Metal, and welcome to the afterward to the ninth episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. I said when I did the afterward to episode one that I wouldn't make a habit out of it, and I haven't, but a few things that I said in episode nine are no longer true, and by that I mean they were true when the episode was released, but they're no longer true. And since I really strive for accuracy here, I felt like I had to do this little update to correct the record. Before we dive into that, I want to thank AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That is a song called Through the Electric Mist. AJ's got a new single out on Bandcamp from his upcoming EP, Sonic Assault. And I'm going to put a link to the Bandcamp uh, down in the show notes below and also a link to his YouTube channel, so please go check him out. As always, I'm drinking a good beer. And in this case, it is the 2020 edition of Founders KBS. See if we can get a shot of that code date there. See if it'll focus on that. And I looked at Founders KBS back in episode two. I actually did an ASTMO review of a 2016 release, so it was a few years old when I did that. Um, this one is the current release, so it hasn't been sitting in a cellar for nearly as long as the last one, um, but it's still a wonderful beer. And I talked a bit about Imperial Stouts on that episode, uh, episode two, and I also talked about uh, cellaring Imperial Stouts on episode two. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, you can go back and take a look at episode two, find out more about those two things. Mm, absolutely fantastic. Founders KBS is one of the Imperial Stouts, one of the barrel-aged Imperial Stouts that I look forward to every year. And I actually talked about barrel aging in episode two, so you can go back and see that too. Um, and actually, that's not true. I looked at those both in episode eight. Um, so anyhow, go back and look at episode eight if you want to learn more about uh, Imperial Stouts and barrel aging. But this is one of the ones that I like to look forward to every year. Founders always knocks it out of the beer. There's always a good balance between the, uh, the barrel notes and the base beer. And the base beer is basically a hopped up version of Founders Breakfast Stout. If you're familiar with that one, they do a bit stronger version of that than they barrel age it. And um, they usually do a couple of different variants. Uh, this year, the Espresso variant was really, really phenomenally good when it came out. Had it recently, and the coffee notes are starting to come off or actually are coming off. So um, I've put that one down for the year. I haven't been picking up any more of that. Mmm. That's one of the things about uh, big beers, coffee beers. Typically, the coffee notes will come off in three or four months, thereabouts. So you typically uh, have a shorter shelf life of them being as good as they could possibly be. So got that. I want to thank the folks at Founders for putting it out. I want to thank the folks at uh, Lowe's Foods for stocking it for me to pick up. Or actually, that one may have come from Best Way. I've been buying it both places. I'm not sure which one that came from. But wherever I bought it, thanks to you for having it, and thanks to you guys for enjoying it with me, and I hope you're drinking a good beer right now. So in episode 9, I made an impassioned statement about the importance of code dating hoppy beers and the impact that a lack of code dating has on my beer purchasing decisions. And I took Heist to task for being one of those breweries. I also gave New Anthem Beer Project a pass for not code dating because they don't have flagship beers that are always in production. Rather, they do periodic releases of their beers. So if you keep up with their release schedule, you know how fresh a given can of beer is, or isn't as the case may be. The good news is that since Episode 9 was released, both Heist and New Anthem have started code dating their beers. The example I've got here from Heist is a little beer of theirs called Atmospheric Disruption. And 
I had not had it before, but I picked it up because it was nice and fresh. And I know it's nice and fresh because we've got that little code date there on the rim. That's the new little booger that I'm talking about. So picked this up, picked up a four pack of it, uh, knew it was nice and fresh and it turned out to be a fantastic beer, um, which no surprise because it's heist and it's fresh. So that's what the code date looks like on heist. And they've got a typical, uh, normal English code date that it was canned on in this case, uh, two nineteen twenty one, And they've got a little, uh, smart ass little saying on there of some sort. And that's sort of like what Oscar blues does a lot. If you look at their beers, typically, um, they say something funnier or witty or interesting or just weird or whatever on the bottom, just depending on whoever's programming the code dater. And uh, New Anthem is code dating too, like I said. Their code dating is a little bit more cryptic. And it's also a little bit harder to see. We'll get it in focus there. And they're doing what's commonly referred to as a Julian date. It's really not a Julian date. It's an ordinal date. Um, but when the craft beer thing first exploded, you saw a lot more breweries doing the Julian dating. Not a whole lot of them do it anymore. Most of them have shifted to uh, normal dating like what Heist is doing. But in this case, it's a real simple one to figure out. If you look, it says 21032, and the 21 is the year, obviously, 2021, and 032 is the ordinal of the year. So I'll put up an ordinal calendar in the background so you can see what I'm talking about. And um, so that 32, uh, there's 31 days in January, so the 32nd day of the year would be February 1st. So that's what that is. And so in each case, now with both of these breweries, you know how fresh their beers are. So in order to celebrate that good news, I'm going to run through my five favorite IPAs from each brewery. And if you see any of these beers, you should absolutely try them if they're fresh. And when you see them now, you'll know whether or not they're fresh because they're codated, which is really important for the hoppy stuff, like I said. So for New Anthem, my favorite beer... It was at that instant that the sublimity of the beer overrode my brain's basic functioning, wiping away any memory of the fact that I'd put on reading glasses and of the need to remove them, ruining an otherwise perfect one-shot episode. God damn it. Mm. My favorite New England IPA, I should say, or my favorite IPA in general from them, which is a New England style, is Velvet Lies. And that's by far and away my number one favorite beer from New Anthem. It's just absolutely sublime how good this beer is. It's a hazy 7%. It's a New England looking beer. It's uh, hopped with Centennial, though. It's a single hop, and Centennial is more of a West Coast hop. Typically, the East Coast beers are hopped with Citra and other really fruity hops. Centennial is not really in that class of hops. In fact, if you are familiar with Bell's Two-Hearted, Bell's Two-Hearted is a single hop Centennial. So Centennial is typically pine, florals, um, a little bit of uh, some other herbals, and not really a whole lot of fruit at all. So it's kind of an odd choice for a New England style, but it's absolutely fantastic in Velvet Lies. Um, fresh two-hearted, if you get it two weeks old, it's absolutely sublime how good the hop is in that. And Velvet Lies is even better because being a New England style, it is more heavily hopped and the hop flavor is more apparent. Um, so it's kind of an oddball hop to choose, but the, ab the result is absolutely fantastic. The cool thing about Centennial is it's got more stability towards hop fade than like Citra and some of the other hops do, so you get a better shelf life out of it. Um, Velvet Lives is brewed with uh, Turo, Carapils, and Vienna malts. Carapils is a dextrine malt that gives you improved head and a bigger body on the mouthfeel. And the Vienna malt is going to provide extra body too. And if you try Velvet Lies, that's one of the things that you're going to pick up on is the body on this beer is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's velvety, and that's, it's just perfectly named beer because it's a very velvety, very thick, soft, wonderful mouthfeel. So awesome tasting beer, awesome mouthfeel. If you see it, absolutely check it out. Um, the rest of my top five uh, IPAs from New Anthem in no particular order uh, Bayal, which is a bigger one at 7.9%. It's more of an imperial IPA. It's hopped with citra and laurel and built on pale malt, which is not uncommon for that type of beer. 
Um, it is a very, very bright tasting beer, a very bright feeling beer. The flavor notes are very bright citrus, some nice florals and some spicy notes, but in particular, the citrus is very bright. And the carbonation is really peppery on it. So if you try Bayal, you'll find that it's a, it's a very lively feeling, very bright feeling beer, um, which is not necessarily always the case with the New England style. It's kind of odd as pe how peppy this beer is, but it's absolutely fantastic. And I'll credit the Laurel with that on the flavor end. Um, Throwing Shade is a 6.9% citrus single hop New England style IPA. It's built on pale malt, wheat, oats, and C20 caramel malt. Um, Throwing Shade being a single hop citra, it's, uh, and New Anthem does a few different single hop citras, but Throwing Shade is one that they make more often than not. You see that one around a fair amount. And it's like New Anthem's answer to high citra quenchal. Absolutely fantastic beer. If you ever had citrus single hops, you know how good they can be if they're done right. And this one's absolutely done right. Um, the wheat gives it a little bit of improved head formation and retention. The oats give it a creamy, smooth mouthfeel. The C20 caramel malt gives it some, uh, some extra body. So it's another one where there's a good bit of body to it. Um, there's a good bit of nice, thicker mouthfeel to it. Um, the next one I'm going to point out is Neon God. It's a 6.9% New England IPA, if you're seeing a pattern here. They're, these are all hazy IPAs. Um, Neon God is uh, Citra Mosaic and Simcoe. It's built on the same base as Throwing Shade, which I said was pale malt, wheat, oats, and C20 caramel malt. So it's got a, got a, a bigger body for the style, maybe. Um, nice and, uh, I guess, a little bit chewy. Um, and in terms of the hopping Citra Mosaic and Simcoe, Neon God's one of those interesting beers that has, it's not just a big, uh, not just a big fruit bomb. It's got a bunch of different stuff going on in particular because of the Simcoe, but also the Mosaic helps. Um, it's got big citrus notes from the Mosaic and the Citra. It's also got some really, really dank pine notes from the Simcoe, some grassiness, some herbal notes. So there's, uh, more going on there than just a typical, uh, Citra hot bomb, not that there's anything wrong with that. And I absolutely love Simcoe and IPAs, particularly hazy New England IPAs. I think Simcoe takes them in a little bit different direction than they typically go, which is cool. The uh, fifth in no particular order of my favorite IPAs from New Anthem is called Steez. And you see that one a good bit too. That's the one that they make a fair amount. And it's a classic Citra Mosaic uh, double hop. Um, which is not an uncommon combination for that style of IPA. Um, Citra and Mosaic complement each other real well. It's a classic uh, Northeast IPA hop pairing. So Steve's is another one to watch out for. So all of those from New Anthem, absolutely fantastic beers. Now that you can look at the bottom of the can and see what the date is on it and see how fresh it is, if you see them and they're fresh, absolutely check them out. They will blow you away. Fantastic beers. Um, looking at Heist in no particular order, I'm not going to pick a favorite out of these because they're all pretty close in terms of how much I like them. Um, Citraquential is the most well-known beer of theirs, probably one of the more well-known IPAs from North Carolina. It's their flagship IPA and it's a citrus single hop. Absolutely fantastic example of what you can do with just Citra in a New England style IPA. Just looked on Beer Advocate and it's rated number 44 of all the New England style IPAs on the site. It's rated uh, number 204 overall out of all the beer ratings on the site, which is an absolutely fantastic showing. And it's got a perfect 100 rating um, world class. And so it's uh, just a fantastic beer, and uh, that's something that everyone seems to agree on is how wonderful Citraquential is. Um, Moje is a 7.1% Motuka single hop. It is just what it sounds like. It tastes like a big-ass glass of alcoholic, wonderful uh, orange juice with just a little bit of lime, a little bit of citrus. Very, very good, very big-flavored beer. Um, the next one is Emoj, which is Moj's big brother. It's an Imperial Stout, or Imperial uh, IPA, rather. I'm thinking about this rascal right here that I'm drinking. So it's an 8.1%, and it is brewed with Motuka Mosaic and El Dorado. Um, and it's an absolutely fantastic beer, um, being that it's got the three different hops that go in different, they're all fruity hops, but they all go in different directions in terms of the fruit. It's a little bit more of a complex one than Moj. Uh, Moj, like I said, is pretty much straight up orange juice. 
Um, Emo J, there's a lot of pineapple and tropical fruits mixed in it. And also from the El Dorado, there's some stone fruit or berry notes. So a little bit more complicated and bigger, 8.1%. Again, just a fantastic example of the style. Um, my number four of my five favorite beers from Heist is Blurred is the Word. It is a 6.8% New England style IPA. All of these are Northeast IPAs that I'm talking about. And it's brewed with Mosaic and Azaka. Um, so it doesn't have the, the citra that you would see in a lot of uh, a lot of these New England style fruit bombs, but it's got a lot of tropical fruit and it's got some really nice grassy herbals and some pine and uh, some funky herbals from the Azaka um, and a lot of grassiness. And that's something I've mentioned before. I really dig grassy notes in IPAs, particularly in the New England style. Some people don't care for it as much, but I do. And that's one of the reasons I think I like Simcoe in those style IPAs so much, because Simcoe's a pretty grassy um, hop. So the last of the five that I'm going to talk about uh, real briefly from Heist is called Not From Concentrate. That's another one of their really well-known ones. They make a lot of it, and it's a really popular one. It's another 6.8% or so, just a little bit shy of the 7% where you typically see IPAs land. It is Citric, Mosaic, Motuka, and Galaxy. And so it's another one of those ones where there is a lot of different stuff going on. It's not just the, uh, not just the citrus fruit bomb. You've got a lot of tropical citrus and pineapple fruit notes. And in terms of that, it is a bomb because they're really huge notes and it's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fruit to it. But there's also a lot of really, really dank herbals, a bunch of grassiness and a good bit of pine too. So not from concentrate is another one that isn't just maybe just the, just the typical fruit bomb. New England style IPA. It's got some other stuff going on. So that's my top five from those two breweries. They both make absolutely fantastic world-class uh, IPAs and particularly they both do the New England style very well. Probably make the best of the style in North Carolina. There's a lot of other good breweries that make really good beers in that style. I don't think any of them can outdo Heist or New Anthem. Um, some of them are competitive. Some of them at times may equal those two, but honestly, in terms of that style, those two breweries are um, make just top shelf beer as far as North Carolina is concerned. And that's why it was always sort of so troubling that they didn't code date. Again, like I keep saying, for New Anthem, it wasn't as big a deal if you keep up with their drops. But for Heist, it was always inexplicable to me why they would make such fantastic beer and not put a code date on it. But they fixed that now. And so, like I said, I felt like I needed to set the record straight and let everyone know that I gave them grief for it before. And when I gave them grief for it, they weren't doing the code dating, but they are now. So... That's why I wanted to sit and, and do this. And this is going to be a real quick one. Um, in fact, that's really it for this update. Um, before you go, if you enjoyed the episode or if you learned something useful about code dating or North Carolina IPAs, please take a second and give the video a like. That's an easy way to tell YouTube that you enjoyed the video and that you want to see more like it. So thanks for joining me today. And thanks to Heist and New Anthem for code dating their beers. Cheers to you guys. If you run across beer from either of these two breweries and it's fresh, you should definitely check it out if you're into New England style IPAs, because like I said, they consistently make some of the best of the style in North Carolina. Um, and if you see it and you look at the bottom of the can, you'll know if it's fresh. So that's Aces. Thanks, guys. In closing, for this time, I'm Old Man Metal. Thanks again for joining me. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get new friends. So good. Until next time, keep those horns up high. Y'all take care. listening to Old Man Metal's Musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review... 
where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics. A South Park podcast called Suck My Balls. The Infinite Fringe. A watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido. Ex Stradivarius guitarist, the Timo Tolki podcast. And the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcast and The Laugh Cast. So check out RatSoundReview.com or search RatSoundReview on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more.